God of the Bible is the devil of the Bible. I don't say that to be mean. I say that because it's a fact. It ain't no such thing as a devil. I'm just using the terms that you're familiar with. It was the God of the Bible that drowned people. It was the God of the Bible that sent animals out of the woods to destroy children. It was the God of the Bible who chose to unalive all the first bull. If in fact that God was real, burn me. Cause I'd rather be with the people, the real ones. Hey Jethro family, guard your heart because Satan's out to destroy you. He'll even use foreign pastors to destroy your faith. Anything he can do to, to, to deter you from God, he'll do it because his know, he knows his time's running out. Keep your heart and your faith in Christ at all costs. Do not lose the faith. Stay in there. Finish the race. Oh, yes. Ask God for discernment because there are so many voices out there that are trying to convince people that the God that we believe in in the Bible is not that real God. It's not the God that we should believe in. And that's why we say that we should pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give us discernment. Because what they are saying is that the God we believe in is a liar. He's not a loving God. And now this comes out from somebody who used to be a believer. Look at that man. He looks very angry as he's speaking about God. Like you'll not tell this is a man who knew God. For how long? For 15 years, this guy knew God. He was preaching about God. He stood in the pulpit and preached every Sunday for 15 years, but something hurt his heart. I can assume maybe God didn't answer a prayer he wanted answered the way he wanted it answered. But God's way is not our way. His ways are higher than our ways. Hebrews 6, 4 says, It is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit. As we're about to finish watching this man complain, think about the verse my wife just read to you. Yes, I am angry. I'm angry because I lived a lie for 15 years and I believed it with all my heart. I separated myself from my family, friends. I moved, relocated, disassociated myself from everyone or anyone who was not saved. I believed that I could not be unequally yoked together with non-believers. So I turned my back on good people or people who needed me. But it was for the cross's sake, right? It was for the cross's sake. Rather than fearing men, I feared the one who can cast both soul and body in that someplace called hell. I took hook, line, and sink of the false story of love called John 316. That's no message of love. That's a message of coercion. Twisting your arm behind your back is a message with the ultimate threat on the end of it. While it says, oh, if you believe, you'll get some cake. But if you don't, I'll burn you. Let me tell you something, every believer. Yeah, I'm mad. Because I care more about people than your God. It is just a book. It ain't real. The God of the Bible is the devil of the Bible. I don't say that to be mean. I say that because it's a fact. It ain't no such thing as a devil. I'm just using the terms that you're familiar with. It was the God of the Bible that drowned people. It was the God of the Bible that sent animals out of the woods to destroy children. It was the God of the Bible who chose to unalive all the firstborn in Egypt, even the slaves and even the firstborn of the cattle. It was the maniacal God of the Bible that did that. And then intimidating you and I so much to the degree that we would see the wickedness of the character Yahweh in the Bible and deny it and say, no, no, he wasn't wicked. No, it really is our fault. It's us. It's us. No, it's not. So according to this man, according to him, God is, is wrong. We, we do no wrong. We are the perfect ones. According to this man, he thinks he's perfect. We, we mess up all the time. You said there's none righteous. No, not one. So, yeah, we mess up a lot. And we cannot compare ourselves to God. And in all these things, God gave people chances. Even the Egyptians, they were given chances to repent, but they kept on hardening their hearts. Yeah, every time God gave Pharaoh a chance, he hardened his heart again and again and again. Another thing, he's not saying what human beings did that God punished them. So the thing is, this guy's not talking about what he did to Pharaoh and brought the Israelites out of slavery for 400 plus years. 
it took the hand of God to bring them out. Many people are on the brink of suicide or have committed suicide because they battle within themselves, wondering why loving God made them the way that they uh, that He did. But yet, uh, because of how they were taught, God, you in your own word condemn me and you made me this way. Do you know how many people are miserable and terrified of the monster in the closet? They can't live their life because they fear that this wicked beast is going to destroy them because they won't find him while he's playing hide and seek. While there's no evidence that he even exists or if it's a he, it, she, they, them. We don't know. To me, this man looks confused, broken, as if something happened. He cannot say for 15 years he didn't know God exists. He cannot say for 15 years he's doubting that God created us in his own image. I feel like one may have had, maybe he's praying for something. Maybe his marriage failed, but he's bitter about something. I mean, yes. this man has so much bitter in his eyes, in his mouth. Yes, you can tell, like he wants to cry. Like this is a man with the deep thoughts disturbing him. And he's just angry at God. We are living at a time that people think evil is good. What sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. But keep in mind, this proverbial God is the one that created you and I this way. I don't agree with anything you said. We were made in God's image, yes, but sin separated us from God. And then said, the writers rather, said in the book, that he established the end from the beginning, that none of this is done outside of his will. So here's what I want to say. First of all, to all you beautiful people out there, ain't nothing wrong with you. You weren't born in no sin, shaped in no iniquity, with some death sentence on you simply because you were born. If a programmer developed a piece of software that had a virus, we would think something was wrong with that developer if we saw them going crazy over the software and stomping it, jumping up and down like say, you know, saying, what's wrong with you software? What's wrong with you? You're going to burn for this. We would think that person was crazy. You see it now, right? What this man forgets is that we were made in God's image. But the moment we took that fruit, that's how we were separated from God. The moment we thought we could do it better than God. Yes. So we became separate from God and that's why God is trying to bring us closer to him through his son so that we are made perfect in him through Jesus Christ how dare you I will be damned and refuse to lift my hands up for any idea of any type of God that would make me in sin whatever the hell that is make me worthy of death and then tell me if I don't find him in the midst of all of these claimed fictitious ideas called gods, I'm going to burn for an eternity. Well, let me tell you something. If you were real, I ain't nobody's sheep. I ain't nobody's slave. And I'm not scared of you or your idea. So if in fact that God was real, burn me. Because I'd rather be with the people, the real ones. I'll stand with them. Burn me. You want to burn me? Because I love more than you, that's what I would say. Do it. Because I ain't nobody's punk. And you ain't going to threaten me. And don't let nobody threaten you. For all of those that follow me, all my friends, I'm sorry. I'm sure you feel me. But I ain't sorry. And I don't know if I'm a... So at the end of the day, yes, Sean is mad. I don't know after watching that what you think about him. But all I can say is this is an angry man who is very, very broken and who something went wrong somewhere. Yeah, he's very broken and bitter about something. Don't 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 be mad at the man. Don't hate the man. Pray for the man. Yes. We're not told why he's so bitter and angry, but just pray for him. He needs prayer. Yes, he's made his choice that he wants to go to hell. But you can tell even with his choice, he doesn't look happy with it. And But one thing for sure, God still loves him. God loves him and we love him. Pray for him. Yes. Pray for him because he still has a chance. He still has a chance to repent. So as you live your life, be aware of the many voices out there trying to convince you to turn away from God in these end times. There shall be many who will rise up to try to convince you to turn away from God. So take care of your salvation. Guard it. Guard it with everything you got. 
If you love this video, like, subscribe, and become part of our family. We'd love to have you. Yes, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank you. God bless.